All right, so 3, 5 is what we're going to do when we just can't find any zeros. So last section we looked at finding rational zeros, and then once we got down to a quadratic, we could use the quadratic formula. But what if just neither of those work? So this section is how do we find them when the other methods don't work? And all the other methods don't work. It's kind of like a last resort. Um, so we're going to start with a theorem. Um, and before we can do the theorem, we need to make sure we understand what continuous means. So a polynomial is a continuous function, um, meaning it has no breaks, gaps, or holes. So all polynomials are continuous. Not all functions are, though, but polynomials are. Um, so the intermediate value theorem is going to sound overwhelming, so be patient. Um, but we, the main thing we need is we need a continuous function on the interval a, b. So it doesn't have to be continuous everywhere, but it needs to be continuous on some interval, the interval that we're looking at. And then um, we're going to look at two values. We're going to look at the endpoints. We're going to look at f of a and f of b. So f of a and f of b can't equal each other. So there's f of a on the graph. F of b is somewhere else. This is just an arbitrary function. And we're going to have a be the one that's less than b. And then we're going to have some number in between a and b. So between f of a and f of b. So n is some number in between. Then there has to be at some point in the function where it touches n. So basically, if we have f of a and f of b, and they're continuous. There's n in between, right? There's, right, the graph can't like go around, right? The only way for the graph to get from f of a to f of b is it has to cross n at some point. Um, it could cross it multiple times, right? But it has to cross n. That's the idea here. So there's some function value where f of c equals n. It's basically just telling us at some point we have to hit the numbers in between. Uh, we are going to use it for zeros. So I think with zeros, it will make a lot more sense. And this is going to be our only application. So we're going to use this to show zeros exist. It does not tell us the value, but it tells us zeros exist. So I'm going to change that value of n to zero. So here's zero, zero. And so if one of them is negative and one of them is positive, if we have a continuous function, so here's 0, here's f of a, here's f of b, right? Let's say one's positive and one's negative. The function's continuous, so I can't just have two pieces because that's not continuous. Because it's continuous, the only way to make it from f of a to f of b is it has to cross 0. It could cross it lots of times, it could cross it once, but it has to cross 0. So this is telling me that if 1 is greater than 0 and 1 is less than 0, so f of a greater than 0, f of b less than 0, or vice versa, there has to be at least one 0 in the interval. Because the only way to get from point A to point B right, is to cross 0. Uh, do we know how many times it crosses? No, right? It could cross more than once. But it has to cross. So let's see how this works. Uh, we're going to kind of do things in a little more mathy proof. So to sh we're showing there's a zero. We're not finding a zero. So showing is almost like a proof. So we can start thinking in a calculus sense. So there's kind of um, two rules for the theorem. Um, one that we often overlook is that the function is continuous. So is this function continuous? We have f of x is x to the fifth plus x cubed minus 3, and so yes, it's continuous on the interval 1, 2, because it's a polynomial. It's actually continuous everywhere. But we're specifically interested in that interval. If you do not state that it's continuous, then you're not doing a real math proof. Um, because if it's not continuous, then technically it could be one of those weird piecewise functions where it just jumps. So that's why con continuity is so important. And so then two, then we'll find the values at each endpoint, f of one and f of two. 
So f of 1 will be 1 to the 5th, 1 cubed minus 3, which is negative 1. And then f of 2 is, who knows, some big number. Um, 2 to the 5th, uh, what's that, 32, 2, 4, 8, plus 8 minus 3. So 40 minus 3 is 37. And is zero in between these intervals? Yeah. In between these numbers? Yeah. Negative 1 is less than 0. 37 is greater than 0. So yes, there is a 0 by IVT. That's my abbreviation because it gets really long. There exists a 0 between um, 1 and 2. So the zero is in between one and two, right? But these are the outputs. So because the outputs go from negative to positive, there's a zero in between the x values. So there's some value f of c that equals zero. And c would be in between one and two.